Hey, welcome back. I'm Miss Jenny Lee. Um, I wanted to talk about some really healthy stuff. Uh, we've had a lot of fans that ask questions about what do you guys eat? I mean, what is like the healthy stuff that you guys eat? You know, they're so curious. And um, and like I said, Freddie is a very uh, beautiful person. Okay, he's a very strong guy. He's full of muscle, you know, and people want to know what do you eat and how much do you eat of it, you know? And so, Freddie, majority of the time, eats the food that I cook. Sometimes he'll go out to eat um, in between his breaks when he's working a lot all day. Um, Sometimes he'll eat at restaurants afterwards when he's done working. So, But most of the time, I just want him to eat healthier because going out to eat is not always the healthiest choice out there, what they offer at restaurants. So I would make a lot of um, foods like rice soup with meat in it, with meat in it, with a lot of garlic and ginger. Um, I make soups where I add eggs into. There's different types of soups that I make. You know, I can make chili soup sometimes, and chili is very extremely a high protein meal. It's um, it's got the ground beef in it. You know, it's got the the red kidney beans, which is full full of protein as well. A lot of fiber content in that, as well, and. Um, and so, um, other soups I make are kind of like egg drop soup as well. It's got, sometimes it has seafood, sometimes it has like some pork or some chicken in it as well. Um, there's a lot of different soups I can make, you know, and I always make sure, I always put minced garlic and ginger in it, okay? You know how they have um, garlic, garlic powder and garlic ginger? Oh my gosh, toss that out your kitchen cabinet. When you compare the flavor of the real ginger to the powdered ginger, they taste nothing like the same at all. The smell is a little different, it's very, very different, and the taste is completely different. So I used to use the powder version when I was lazy, and now um, one time I used lemongrass powder, and I noticed that my food tastes different, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and it was the lemongrass powder. If you compare the real lemongrass, to the, to the powder version, the powder is disgusting. So ever since I experienced that, I no longer use um, garlic powder or, um, you know, and, um, and the powder version of ginger. And also, the real stuff is so much more healthier, it's fresh, it's much stronger in flavor, and it's got more of the, the juices in them, and it's got its natural antioxidants in them still, and all the vitamin, vitamins and minerals in them. And so it's a lot healthier for your body overall compared to the powder dried out version, okay? So it's up to you if you want the healthier version or just the, the overly processed version where it's just really not good for you at all. So even for flavoring, it's not good at all, the powder version. So, um, so garlic and ginger is really good. Um, it's good for your sinus. When you have sinus congestion, it's very good for you. You, you mince the garlic and ginger and you put it in your soup, then um, you can put it in your tea like the ginger you could put some of that in your tea and um, I noticed that when I would eat and chew the um, the boiled version of the ginger that's in my tea it kind of caused me to have an itchy throat it makes me start coughing because it's so spicy still even I've boiled it up to an hour but the ginger can be kind of spicy where it makes your throat itch and makes you cough more so if some you know, I still can't help but sometimes I still like chewing on and eating you know so I'm um, so it's up to you um, the way I use it, I put a lot of ginger, which I shouldn't. I can put a lot of ginger, but I'm not supposed to chew on it and eat the fiber, you know, because it will cause my throat to itch because it's very potent, very strong, and very spicy. So, um, so if you leave the fibers behind and drink the ginger in the tea after it has been boiled for quite a while, then that should be fine. But for me, I can't help it. I, don't, I just can't throw it out like that. I just have to eat it too. So. Maybe I should just put less ginger, of course, you know, and then I can eat a little bit. <laughs> and um, so the ginger and the garlic is very good for your overall wellness. Um, it's got full of antioxidants as well, a lot of healing power. Um, very good. If you have sinus congestion, it'll clear it up pretty good. Okay, like I said, it's very strong, so you kind of have to have it in a soup version where it's boiled. Or you could put your ginger into your tea. You will not put garlic in your tea for most people, so... Um, garlic, you could put that in soups. It would be a lot better with soups, okay? You can put it when you saute your meats. You could put it in that as well. Um, but for ginger, people will more likely to put um, in teas, not garlic in your tea. So, um, so, uh, so as part of my basic essentials is the garlic and, garlic and ginger in pretty much all of my foods that I, that I cook.
and stir fries and soups. Okay, fabulous. Very good for your health. Um, very good for your blood too, and it helps build your immune system. The better your immune system, the better that your body will help repair itself when it's damaged. So, um, and also, um, so we use a lot, we eat a lot more of the lean chicken because um, beef can be very um, hard to digest in general, and beef is very expensive in the Midwest, of course. Um, but it's even more expensive in the east and west coast because they have more seafood over there and, and ha having red meat is very unbelievably expensive and seafood in the east and west coast are very cheap because <laughs> they're by the ocean so um so freddie eats beef once in a while he doesn't eat it often um he eats chicken more and um and also we will have veggie dips also to snack on as well and when you have something to dip in, the salad tastes better. Or you can prepare a bowl of salad, okay? Um, just watch out for the dressing. Um, for, for a salad, for it, to, for it to be tastier, you can top it with a little bit of croutons. Croutons can be kind of high in sodium. So you could just use very little bit of croutons for a, uh, for a crunchier type of um, salad. You can use sunflower seeds. Go for the, um, go for the no salt sunflower seeds. Um, the one with sodium could be a little too salty and you don't need all that extra extra sodium in your body because you'll get sodium a lot from the um, natural sodium from the veggies itself and you'll get a lot of sodium for the dressing that you use okay so be light on the dressing even I get spoiled sometimes I, I like to put a little extra but still you know you take too much of that dressing it's, it could be high in fat as well and high in salt and what's also good is um, you can add eggs in there uh, boiled eggs in with your salad for some protein and the thing is some people are very afraid of egg yolk very very they say oh it's too high in cholesterol it's very fattening I don't want to be fat blah, blah blah but you know what the egg yolk itself is actually much healthier than, than the egg white itself there is actually more protein in the um, the white egg yolk but the content of the egg yolk the orange yellow egg yolk has tons, it's packed with full of nutrients, okay? And think about it, you know, the embryo, the, the baby chick actually is formed from the egg yolk itself, so imagine how nutritious that, how nutritious that has to be to grow into an actual, you know, baby chick, you know? So, anyways, um, so, the, so do your research, check out the nutrients of the egg yolk, you'll be amazed what's in it, it's got tons of zinc in it, it's got tons of like calcium it's got lots and lots of good stuff in there that's very healthy for you um, you could stick to no more than two egg yolks a day if you're really afraid of the fat contents of that then just stick to one egg yolk you know you can eat two full egg two you can intake two full eggs a day every day two egg yolks I mean two whole eggs I'm sorry a day and um, you can put in your salads you can eat it for breakfast if you like um, Protein is known to be very hard to digest, so it's mostly recommended that you intake your high protein items like during the day or in the morning. So if you want to eat, have, so if you want to have some boiled eggs for the day, try taking it for breakfast. You know, you could have one or two whole eggs if you like, and you could have a fruit, a banana, or an apple if you like for breakfast. You know, if you want to deal with like a more leaner body or like a weight loss program or something, that's that's a nice. You know breakfast meal for you but um, but also another thing is if you're one of those people who cannot intake fruits or vegetables or who can't really stick to that meal plan of like throwing some fruits and veggies into your diet um, you could I recommend smoothies okay and smoothies can sound fabulous but at the same time it could be very good for you and it could be very bad for you depending on how it's prepared so if you're trying to get fruit smoothies from like restaurants, forget it. It is really unhealthy, okay? Um, I'm not gonna say no names, okay? Some places are known for their, sh um, for their fast food and known for their shakes. Oh, they are so packed with um, fat dairy, ice cream type of shake, and it is so sweet, packed with like tons of high fat, saturated fat in there and all the unhealthy stuff, tons of unnecessary sugar, you'll definitely gain weight from that. The typical shake out there at a fast food restaurant is about at least a thousand, at least about 12 or 1500 calories. Tons of fat in there, okay? 
So that's not good for you, number one. Okay, so even like a well-known fruit bar smoothie place, I would say most of them are not even healthy either. They could say, oh, my favorite is the mango smoothie. I love it. This restaurant is known for the mango smoothie. Oh, and boba smoothie. You know what? They put a lot of syrup in there. They put a lot of artificial syrup flavoring in there. There's a lot of sugar in it. There's a lot of um, high fructose corn syrup, which is extremely bad for you. Okay, it's got a bad rep. It's a lot in all of those syrups that are used as artificial flavoring to enhance those fruit smoothies, okay? So don't be fooled by it. Even I myself love those fruit smoothies, but I have to stop ordering from those restaurants because it's not good for my body. It causes weight gain. It's a lot of sugar in your body. It causes a lot of bloatedness because your body's intaking so much sugar at once that your body's retaining a lot of water, so it causes a lot of bloatedness, you know? So I kind of started recently to stop ordering those smoothies and be more um, in self-control because I'm doing more of a um, new smoothie diet for myself. Um, what I do now um, is, um, before I get to that preparation about smoothies, I want to tell you more about, um, some people are not familiar with um, antioxidants, you know. Um, you could, like I said, you could do your research yourself. You could look up online, antioxidant foods as keywords. Um, top 10 foods for high antioxidants, you know, stuff like that. Like, like for example, um, antioxidants are um, pretty much all together, vitamins and minerals and all the goody stuff that helps build your immune system. It helps repair your cells better when it's damaged. Um, to be a little more scientific of what they're trying to tell you is what antioxidants are. Um, they are, they help prevent and fight against free radicals. And what does free radicals mean? Okay, well, in your cells, when it, when it reproduce, for you to live in general, your body is constantly producing new cells to, um, because every day, every second, your cells are dying out. Like your skin, the, the dead flaky skin on your body, that's dead cells, skin cells that slough off like in flakes. That, for example, you would be dead if you didn't have cells that help repair your skin cells to be alive. Otherwise your cells keep falling off and then you become like a skeleton and you're dead. So these cells are, are still constantly being reproduced, okay? And when you age, these cells produce less. They're not as strong as when you're younger. So as you age, your hair will turn white or gray or both. Um, you'll be gaining more weight because your body's not able to metabolize to, to be stronger and healthier, you know, and to be younger. Um, and also, you're going to be very tired because you no longer have energy. So what I'm trying to tell you is to promote you to intake a lot of antioxidants. And people get confused. What is antioxidants? They are vitamins, they are vitamins and minerals that help prevent or, or stop the free radicals. The free radicals are these little, little things in your cells. They help um, damage the cell itself. It goes like high speed. The, the more... In, the more oxygen you intake, the more that your body wears out. So these free radicals in the cells get damaged, eventually they die out. So these antioxidants, the vitamins and minerals, are what that helps prevent and helps slow down the free radicals in the cell from destroying itself to death. So if you figure out, if you wonder why, why do healthy people, why do people who intake a lot of fruits and veggies that watch their diet, they don't smoke, they don't drink, why do these people look more attractive? Why do these people age so well? These people are like in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, or in their 30s. They still look like teenagers, you know? Um, but then you compare it to the other group of people that smoke, that drink heavily, um, that don't take care of the dental, they don't eat healthy, okay? They don't eat fruits, they don't eat vegetables, they, um, they don't home cook their meals in a healthy way. Just because you home cook your foods doesn't necessarily mean that you're a healthy eater, okay? Because you could just make just as bad food at home as you order food from outside that's very high in fat, unhealthy, and it's destroying your body. So, um, so what I'm trying to say is um, the better you take care of yourself nutritiously, the better you will look, your skin will glow, um, the alcohol and the smoking, you're just going to have to cut that out. People say, oh, I only smoke or I only drink when I'm in a social gathering. So pretty much you're a follower, right? 
I normally don't do it by myself, but I do do it in a social gathering. So I, once again, because you're a follower. Why would you be a follower just to feel like you're in a social environment to do what everyone's doing because you can't control yourself? So that's another self-contradicting thing in life is that you might as well not even go out if that's what you're going to do and follow people. If they smoke, then you smoke too. And if they drink, you drink too. People have their choices, I understand, but if you really want to better yourself, you're just going to have to eliminate 100% out. And, and people abuse themselves so much with smoking and drinking, even if they say they only do it once in a while. What is, what is considered once in a while? Once a week? Every weekend? And just because it's, you, even if you do it once a week, but some people could do it pretty intensively in large amounts of smoking and drinking. You know, that could be very destroying, you know? But anyways, that's people's business. If you choose to better yourself, you better yourself now and as soon as possible and for your own health and wellness. So if you want that nice glowing skin, if you want that healthiness, if you want to feel good about yourself every time you wake up in the morning and be energized, then the time to start is, is at least better now than never, right? So, so uh, and also that alcohol is really bad for your liver and kidney because it is full of fat and calories, okay? And it's very high in sugar too. And, it's, and that's what gives you the belly fat, okay? I know I have belly fat too because I had five kids and I do not like my belly fat, okay? I still have some preg pregnancy weight on me. My son's only eight months old and he's the fifth number five baby. And even having children, I hate this body fat on me, but sitting here and complaining about myself is not gonna help unless if I intake um, my food nutritiously. So, um, Let's talk about the top 10 or the top notch stuff that you can eat that are high in antioxidants, okay? The number one fruit, the number, number one fruit, the highest in antioxidants, you guys, guess what? Blueberries. The, the darkest blues in colors are the best, highest in antioxidants. So the blueberries gets the number one, okay? And... Um, the next come up are other berries, the berry family, okay? Um, comes the cherries, um, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, okay? The berry, flan the, the berry family group of the fruits are the top notch, okay? There's, um, there's other antioxidant full of stuff also are like pomegranate seeds are really good too, up there as well, and um, grapes also. Um, people say that, oh, I drink wine because it's full of antioxidants, but by the way, it's pretty harsh in your liver and kidneys, so be careful on the wine. Um, you know, it could, wine is very, very strong, and it makes you, like, um, drunk very easily. It is extremely high, and, uh, you know, it makes you very drunk very fast compared to beer. Um, so people think, oh, I drink wine, but you know what? Um, I don't even recommend wine because it's very high in um, alcohol and it's just very strong. It's not good for you, okay? But, you know, you might as well eat grapes. If you want some wine, substitute with some yummy bowl of fresh, crunchy grapes, you know? What about that? That won't make you drunk. <laughs> um, and also, like, very citrusy stuff, too. Like, grapefruit is very citrusy. Limes, lemons, oranges are full of vitamin C. Like I said, Stuff like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, um, those are among the antioxidants as well, you know? Um, so, like I said, um, also dark chocolate is also supposed to be good for you because dark chocolate is more bitter. It is not sweet at all, really. And what's the main ingredient in dark chocolate is the, the cocoa in it. The cocoa is very high in antioxidant and cocoa is used in dark chocolate okay I'm not talking about the sweet the milk chocolate ones like the Hershey milk chocolate ones oh no those are nothing but sweet the dark chocolate ones labels dark chocolate those are the healthier antioxidants okay so um, and also there's also um, like certain nuts are very high in anti antioxidants also like um, almonds um, there's some in, well, let me see um, hazelnut is one of them that has a lot of them. Um, walnuts, walnuts, especially walnuts, have lots of antioxidants in, uh, antioxidants in them too. There are very certain few nuts out there that are very high and concentrated in that um, antioxidants. Okay, um, what else? Um, antioxidants. Oh, okay. And also, 
a lot of the veggie side also. Like kale is is I, I just found out like recently, like about two years ago, about kale. I've never eaten kale before, but now I eat kale every day. Kale is part of the cabbage family. It looks nothing like a cabbage. We're used to the standard cabbage that's round, circular, and white and yellowish, whitish yellow, okay? We're used to that cabbage. But the kale is part of the cabbage family. It's a long, like, a, they come in like long stems of even up to like, mm, about one, about up to like one and a half feet long, they could be, the stems. And it's very like, um, it's like a wrinkly type of like, you know, well, anyways, if you want to know how kale looks like, type kale, K-A-Y, no, no, K-A-L-E, I'm sorry for being stupid, <laughs> K-A-L-E, kale, you can look it up and you'll see how it looks like, so you've ever, so you ever want to try some, you could try finding that type of spelling at the store and figure out, you know, how it tastes like and stuff, you know, so, and kale has a taste that is not very tasty, so I usually put them in soups or I just put them into my smoothie. So for my smoothie, this is what I have for breakfast, okay? I have bananas, I have grapes, I have different berries, I have um, like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, okay? Mixed in with my bananas. And I also throw like a whole bunch full of like, um, of, of shredded um, kale, the green veggie kale, okay? So kale is the number one powerhouse of all greens, okay, of all greens. And also one of Freddie's um, disciples from Freddie's Mountain Kung Fu told us that you can survive alone even with just green apples and kale because he said that um, the kale is so nutritious, but then the, the green apples helps the body digest better with the kale. So if you just have kale and green apples in this world and there's nothing else to eat, you could actually survive with those two combinations. Interesting, huh? And I'm 35 years old right now, and I didn't know until like two years late, two, until two years ago to, to even know about this. So just share it with you guys. So I have bananas, the different berries, I have grapes, and I have the kale in it, right? And I would add about um, one, about, let's say, um, about almost a cup of milk. Um, I use 2% milk. I don't use whole milk because it's, you know, high in fat content and I don't want too much of that. So I would pour about three, three fourth cup or to a cup of milk in it and I would blend it. Um, if you're lactose intolerant and can't handle dairy, you can use water. I don't recommend using juice because your fruits are so sweet already that you don't want to add any more sweet drinks in it because it gets too sweet and I don't think that is not good for you. That's too much sweet. That's too much sweets for you to um, to digest for your liver and your kidney. That's too harsh on it. So you don't want too much. So it's pretty much all natural. So you blend it in your um, blender and you get a yummy fruit smoothie. You can freeze um, to get like a thicker shake like. You can freeze some of your fruits if you like. The only thing I have frozen is my uh, my berries. Um, the rest are refrigerate, refrigerator temperature, like 40 degrees. So, and also, um, you're not gonna like to make smoothies if you have a crappy blender, to be honest. Freddie and I used to use the cheap $20, um, generic, cheap brand. Um, you know, the $20 range, you're gonna get like a really crappy mix, you know. If you have ice in it, it's gonna be really slushy and, and, and stuck, you know? And um, and you're not gonna like your smoothie at all. What we have is one of those um, Warring, commercial grade brand, Warring, W-A-R-I-N-G. Warring is one of those strong, high-powered, commercial grade um, blenders, okay? Just because it's commercial grade doesn't mean that it's a, a perfect blender. Um, the one we got is the top-notch ones, okay? It's the um, it's the one that is about pretty pricey. They're about $300, okay? The ones that they use at um, restaurants. So, and so, and so it, it blends it like you can imagine. Like every piece is all blended so well. And so you only get a like smoothie if you have one of those. <coughs> and also, um, that's it for now. My throat is so dried out, so to be continued.